Hey guys, Robin Steph from Infinite Combo here, and we're gonna do a video about Force of Will, except not not this Force of Will. This Force of Will. So, Force of Will is a card game. I believe it is Japanese, and uh, we decided to pick up a couple decks and play a game. We are going into this completely sight unseen. Um, I literally just kind of, you know, saw the artwork and it looked really cool, so I decided to pick up the decks. So we decided to do a video on it. Um, so my deck is called Prissia the Beast Lady. And mine is Arla the Winged Lord. It also says it's a, mine is a wind deck, which I guess these are all based on elements. Yeah, which mine's was... a light deck. Okay. So, all right, well... I guess the deck is 50, pre-built deck, 51 cards, a quick rules guide, a rule book, and a play sheet. And then it has a whole list of cards. So let's get these things opened and take a look at what we got. Down to the nitty gritty, how to win. Each yeah. player starts the game with his or her own decks. Let's open this up first. Main deck and Magic Stone deck and 4,000 life. A la Yu-Gi-Oh, I guess. Hmm. There are two ways to win a game. Reduce your opponent's life to zero or wait until your opponent has to draw a card during his or her draw phase, but can't because his or her main deck is empty, like Magic. Am I right about Yu-Gi-Oh being 4,000 life? Uh, I think Yu-Gi-Oh starts with 8,000 life, but... Oh. So also on this sheet, it has, it looks like a little explanation of each type of card. Okay. So they have a ruler slash judgment ruler, or J ruler, which is the player's avatar. It allows you to call magic stones to produce will and to do judgment to rush into the battleground. Okay. To do judgment to rush into battleground. I guess that would be the leader of the deck because my card Arla here has a, a thing on it that says J Ruler. Yeah, so this is kind of like, you know, obviously like reminiscent of Commander. Hmm. Um, Resonator is a player's minions. They enter the battleground, attack your opponent, and defend you from your opponent's attacks. Magic stone, mysterious stones with the ability to produce will, the magic power for invoking other cards. So, mana. Mm -hmm. Addition, ward or item cards. They may affect fields or another card by adding to it, putting it underneath that card. Okay. So, like, I guess, like, artifacts and enchantments. I guess. Regalia, great items with huge power. Put them into your field to use them. And spell, one use cards to change the game situation. After resolved, put them into your graveyard. So. Interesting. So the ruler card is double sided. So, like, I'm guessing one side it's a J ruler and one side it's just a ruler. Um, but yeah, like so far, I know we asked about this over at our local game shop, and they did say that, like, from what they knew of the game, it was similar to Magic, and from what I can tell so far, that seems to be true. Like, they have different card types that fulfill, you know, a very similar set of roles. Oh, and they also have an explanation of the, like, anatomy of a turn, basically. So, like, how magic has a, a, you know, a series of phases. Yep. Same story here. So, you have draw, recovery, main phase, and battle phase. And it looks like it's saying that either of these, these could be in either order. Hmm. That it, either one comes after the recovery phase, but you can do either or of the two first. And then an end phase. Okay. So... <clears throat> <laughs> your hand are, is cards that you're ready to play. Don't reveal cards in your hand to your opponent. Thanks, game. Ruler area. 
So, like, I'm guessing that's, like, a command zone. Mm. This is where you put your ruler or avatar. While it's in the ruler area, you can play your ruler's ability or call magic stones. You can also do judgment to put your ruler into your field for five, fighting with your resonator side by side. Oh, no, it's saying put the ruler into your field, which is number five on this little, like, diagram they have. Oh, uh, okay. Um, and then the field. This is where you put your resonators, additions, and regalia. Those cards are active while in your field. Chant standby area. This is where you put your face down cards. You can play a card from your chant standby area if it's a spell. So, what, is that, like, a trap card? Face down cards. It's almost like you have a, a casting time on spells. All right, here we go. Spell, chant, standby. Okay, and they have triggers, so I guess they are like trap cards. I'm just looking at these cards and noticing that the artwork seems to go pretty much all the way to the edge of the card, which makes for a really good aesthetic. Like, they do kind of have borders, but it's not just like a solid, sleek border. It's kind of like, the border is kind of stylized into the artwork itself. Yeah. And obviously, like, um, I don't know if you could tell when Rob was showing the deck that hit, the box that his deck was in, but like, these are obviously like very anime style. Uh, looks like monsters have summoning sickness. You cannot choose a resonator or a J. You cannot attack with a resonator or a J ruler that was put onto the field during this turn. Judgment. You can do judgment to put your ruler onto the battlefield as a judgment ruler. Since then, your judgment ruler may join battle like your resonators. To do judgment, your ruler must be recovered and you need to fulfill the conditions of its judgment. When resolving the judgment, flip your ruler to its J ruler side and put it onto your field. Your J-Ruler is not a Resonator, so effects applying to Resonators do not affect it. You may call Magic Stones resting your J-Ruler like you do with your Ruler, except during a turn you did Judgment. If your J-Ruler is destroyed, put it back to your Ruler area with its J-Ruler side up and keep the same orientation it had when it was destroyed, recovered, or rested. It loses attack and defense. It loses attack, defense, and all abilities but you may rest it to call magic stones. You cannot call magic stones if you already did judgment during that turn. In this game, you may declare an action in response to another action before this last one resolves. This is called chasing. Chased actions resolve before the actions they are responding to. So, they have something like the stack where you can respond with things. What you, it's confusing. What you can do at any time you can do the following actions at any time, even during your opponent's turn or during a battle. Play a spell that is chant instant from your hand by paying its cost. Do what the card says in the order it's written, then put it into your graveyard. Play an activate ability of one of your cards by paying its activation cost. All activate abilities have a colon in them. The part before the colon is the activated cost. The part after the colon is the effect you get when you pay the activation cost. If this arrow symbol appears on its cost, that mean, it means resting that card as part of the activation cost. If that card is a resonator, you cannot play the active you cannot play the activate ability with rest during the turn it was put onto the field. Resting is just tapping. Tapping, right? basically. I was yeah. gonna so say we're just gonna, I saw I saw that yeah. symbol that looks like a so, tap symbol. Yeah, so we're just gonna call tapping instead of resting. It's just gonna make it easier for both of us, I think. Play a spell Chant Standby from your hand or from your Chant Standby area, area if its trigger condition is met. If you play it from your hand, you need to pay its cost like any other card. If you play it from your Chant Standby area, you do not need to pay its cost. Okay, so we're all sleeved up. Yep, sleeved up, ready to go. So, uh, so setting up the game, so we each prepare our main deck and Magic Stone deck. Um and shuffle them and put them into their zones. Then we use a random method to determine who will go first. And then we each draw five cards from our main deck. Then if we don't like 
our hand, starting with the player that goes first, we may choose any number of cards from our hand and put them on the bottom of our deck in any order, and then draw that many cards. And then each player simultaneously sets our ruler by putting it onto the ruler area and then start the game with the first player that takes his or her turn. And much like magic, the draw phase and recovery phase or untap phase, you skip on the first player that plays. And both players skip the recovery phase on their first turn because they're not going to have anything to recover anyways. Also, normally we would also be shuffling our magic stone decks, but because the pre-cons only come with one type of magic stone, there's no point in us shuffling. Yeah, there's no reason to shuffle, you know, my entire magic stone deck here is all light magic stones, so I always know I'm going to get a light magic stone no matter what, so... But just, just for future reference, normally you would shuffle both decks. Yep. So, I'm just going to roll for high. Okay. With the D4 that I happen to have handy, and I get a 1. And you get a 1. And I get a 3. Alright, so I'll go first. So we start, we have our... So will you be playing first, or will you be drawing first? I guess I'll play first. So no, we haven't drawn our hands yet. Yep, so our Magic Stone decks are ready, our main decks are ready. Now we play our Ruler on the Ruler side, not the J Ruler side. Right. So yours is on... Yes. And... Just I guess it's like up. bottom middle is where your ruler is supposed to be. Okay. Now we each draw our opening hand of five cards. Uh, the maximum hand size by default in this game is seven, just like magic. Let's see. So... I mean, like mine, for example, I have a lot of low will costing cards, and then I have one card that has a high will cost. Um, so I would probably consider this a good keepable hand if it were magic. Um, so I guess I'll just give it a shot and see what happens. I, I will keep. And then if you decide you want a mulligan, you can take any number of cards from your hand, put them on the bottom of your deck in any order, and then draw that many cards. Um, I'll just do one. Just to see how this works out. So okay. I'll put that one on the bottom. And take one off the top. Alright, that's fine. Just wanted to get a healthy variety of cards here in my opening hand. So, with that said, you will be playing first. Yep. Alright, so on the first turn, much like a magic, I don't get to draw a card, and I skip my, uh, what the heck phase recovery is it called? Phase. Recovery phase, which is basically the untap phase. You have nothing to recover. I have so. nothing to recover. So, now I can go on to my main phase, in which car case I could call a magic stone, I could put play a Resonator or a Regalia by paying its cost. Um, I can add an addition from my hand to either another card or to my field by playing its cost. I could play a spell. I could put a card into my chant standby area. I could And then I could declare battle or I could do judgment. So in my case, I will start by calling a magic stone. Uh, okay, so I could play something from my hand, but there's nothing that I want to play right now. So um, next would be the end phase. So all damage dealt to resonators and J rulers is removed, much like magic. If the turn player has more cards in hand than their maximum hand size, that player must discount, discard down to maximum hand size. I only have five cards in my hand, so I don't have to do that. And then my opponent takes their turn. So. so, first step is to draw. Yep. What, so you ended up, um, calling a stone, right? Yeah, that's all I did, was so, I just... So I'm gonna do the same thing. Okay. So, what's the word for it? Resting. Resting my ruler to call a stone, and now I have a wind magic stone. Okay. Let's see, I will then use that Windstone to play a Resonator, which is the Beast Queen's Guardian. Okay. So it's a 300-300 um, with the ability Evolution. So I can pay a Wind and a Generic, um, hard to read from a distance. Um, if there are no Evolution counters on this card, put an Evolution counter on it, and as long as 
Um, there are one or more evolution counters on this card. It gains plus 300, plus 300. Wow. So. Okay. Um, just like in Magic, um, Resonators have summoning sickness, essentially. They can't attack the same turn that they're summoned. I assume there are probably some that have haste, basically. But this one doesn't. So, on that note, I will just say go. Okay. So, draw first. This is going to be the one big difference that will take me a little while. And then recover. So, I will, again, rest my ruler to summon a magic stone. And then I will play a resonator for two, which is Wingman of Armala. He's a 300-600 with flying, so it cannot be blocked by J Resonators Ooh. without flying. And then I can rest him and target Resonator gains flying until end of turn. Huh. Seems good. So then I will go to my end step. I don't need to discard, so we will move on to your turn. Okay. Perfect. And then your recovery phase. Hmm. Um, well, I have a Regalia that costs Zilch to play. Okay. So it's Horn of the Sacred Beasts. Um, I can rest it to produce a generic and spend this only to spend this will only to cast four Sacred Beast cards. Or I can rest it to give my J Ruler plus 200 plus 200 until end of turn. As long as it's Prisia, the commander of Sacred Beasts, it gains Imperishable until end of turn. I was just reading Imperishable, so Imperishable is a lot, is, I guess it's kind of similar to Regenerate and into, like a fusion between Regenerate and Indestructible. So, so if your J-Ruler with Imperishable would be destroyed, put it back into your ruler area with its ruler side up instead and you can do Judgment again. Which basically means you get a second chance at using it. So that artifact would allow you to respond to me destroying yours or it dying in combat to give it imperishable, allowing you to use it again by putting it back into your ruler zone, ruler side up instead, which would allow you to then use judgment to put it back as a creature again. Okay. So that's pretty good. I'll just... um. I'll rest my ruler to get another magic stone. Okay. So now I have two. I will rest my regalia and one magic stone to give this an evolution counter. Okay. Um, Doesn't the generic will from that ability, can, can't it only be used to cast... You're right. ...sacred beast of... You're right. Well, in that case... Just use your two... Yeah. Wind stones to give it a yeah. I thought I was missing something. Evolution there. counter. So now it has an evolution counter. So now it's plus three hundred plus three hundred. So it's a six hundred six hundred. Pretty strong. So I'm going to go to combat. Okay. So when you're in combat, you can either attack a rested resonator, mm -hmm. or you can attack the player directly. I Interesting. Believe. So you can di directly attack other creatures, basically. Only rested ones. But only ones that yeah, are Yeah, so like you couldn't you couldn't attack this unless... Yes. I was just looking because a card in my hand mentions an ability called Target Attack. Target... If, you're, if, you're J -re if your Resonator has Target Attack, um, it can, it can attack it can attack recovered J Resonators as well. Interesting. So... Okay. Um, well... So you would choose, I mean, in this case, you have to choose me. So then you would rest your resonator that's attacking. Mm -hmm. Then I may rest one of my recovered resonators or J ruler to block, uh, in which case I'm not going to because I would lose my resonator and not kill yours. So I will just let the damage resolve. So I'm going to take 600 damage, which will bring me down to 3,400. Okay. Nope. All right. So you can go. Okay. So I will 
draw first, then recover, then my main phase. Okay, I will rest my ruler to get another light magic stone. And then I will play my own regalia, which is Artemis the God's Bow, which has my J Ruler gains target attack. Ooh. When this card enters the battlefield, or the field, put two arrow counters on it. If your J Ruler is Arla the Winged Lord or Arla the Hegemon of the Sky, so I am Arla the Winged Lord, put four on it instead. So this gets four arrow counters. And then it has three abilities. Um, rest and remove an arrow counter to deal 400 damage to target attacking or blocking J Resonator. Oh. Rest and remove two arrow counters. Destroy target addition resonator card, addition resonator or card in chant standby area. So I can destroy a trap or, and I I think the addition resonators are basically like auras. So they like and they are go on a resonator. Yeah. So this is. Can re either remove a um, can remove an addition resonator or a chance standby card. S seems pretty good. Seems pretty friggin' value. And then rest, remove four arrow counters from this card. Destroy target J resonator with flying. So holy value. We get four. Jeez. Counters and of course it seems like regal at least the, the regalia in both of these decks all cost zero. Okay. So that's these are these are really powerful cards that seem to give you a lot of options for zero cost. So they are pretty strong. Um, after that, though, I am going to end my turn. So. All right. I have to get. I have to wrap my brain around the idea of drawing, and then, and then recovering. Yep. Let's see what I drew. I got another Horn of the Sacred Beasts. Well, first things first, I'm going to rest my ruler to get another stone. Two. Ugh. Oh, rest two magic stones for Sisse, the Ancient Forest, which says... Beasts and uh, four sacred beasts I control gain plus 200 plus 200. So I will go to combat. Okay. I'm going to swing for 800. 800. Okay. I am going to block. Okay. And then before damage, I will cast the final word. Target blocking resonator you control gets plus 1,000, plus 1,000 until end of turn. How much attack does he have now? 1,300 and 1,600 defense. Nothing I can do about that. Okay. All right, so the Beast Queen's Guardian dies. I will tap one into wind, and now this is the interesting thing about my ruler, I can spend um, wind will as if it were any other kind of will. So mm, I just so played a creature with fire will, even though I don't have fire will sources. Zuke the Sacred Beast. It's a phoenix. Uh, okay, this card can attack and play its rest abilities the same turn and enters the field. When this card enters the field, it deals 200 damage to target resonator for each four secret beasts you control. Which I only control one right now. So, yep, so deal 200 to... Okay. Now he's down to 600. Yep. But he gets a plus 200, plus 200 from him. Yep. So in that case, I'll declare combat again. And attack for 600. Yep. Hmm. I'll block. Oh. Wait. Hmm? 
How does this die? He still has 1,300 attack. Oh. Okay. Yep. All right, then I will recover. I already drew. Oops. Okay. So I will rest to get a stone. Okay. I will pay a light to play Little Angel of Armala. So it's a 300-300 with flying, and then the ability Banish this card, you gain 300 life. So what is Banish? Put this card into its owner's graveyard. You can only banish cards you control. So sacrifice this card, gain 300 life. Hmm. Then I will play Light Sprite, which is a 200-300 with flying. And rest this card, gain 100 life for each fairy you control. Jeez. So that's the only fairy I have right now. And true. This, this one's an angel. And light really is the parallel to white mana because yep. this is all life gain. <laughs> yep. All right, and then I will pay yet another light to play Gwibber the White Dragon, who is 1,200-1,200 flying, and you may pay two generic less to play this card for each resonator you control that entered the field this turn. Oh. So he's so he's one light and four generic, but because I played two other resonators, I can cast. Okay. And then I well, I don't have a way to attack with any of these this turn, so that'll be it for me. Gonna rest my ruler for stone. Okay. But. I will tap my two regalias and a stone, this time for a water resonator, which is, I can't freaking read these cards from here. Um, Juan Wu, the sacred beast, looks like a giant grotesque turtle. Turtle McDurtle is a 500-700. Um, also, Hmm. This has an ability. When it enters your field, return target resonator to its owner's hand if its total cost is less than or equal to the number of four sacred beasts you control. Right, but I didn't think it applied. Do you have anything that costs one? Yep, both of these cost one. Let's bounce little angel of our moral to your, to your hand. Okay, that's the 300, 300. Okay. That's the sack for 300 life. Okay, I'll just let it go back to my hand. I'll spend... The rest of my three magic stones mm -hmm. to summon a second turtle mcdurtle okay bounce the next one yep. to your hand all right so uh whoops i gotta draw first then do this stone and I will play dignified seraph it's an 800-800 flyer go to combat mm -hmm. and I will attack yeah. with my 1200-1200 okay um, it flies right it does fly so I can't do anything about that Okay. Down to, what, 2,800? 2,800. Okay. I will play another Artemis the God's Bow, and I will pass the turn. That Draw first. Again. Yep. <laughs> How much did that that last one you summon cost? Three. Now I can untap, because that's what I was supposed to do, is draw and then recover. Yeah, let's just summon another magic stone. Gonna play Turtle McDurtle number three. 
Okay. Turtle army. Two wind wills to play the Beast Queen's counterattack. So right. it's a regular chant spell where um, target resonator I control gets 400 plus 400 until end of turn. And then that creature fights another target creature that you control. And then I'm also going to do rapid growth, which gives, which will give this creature another plus 400, plus 400. Okay. Okay. Yep. Sorry, that. Nope, that's fine. I messed up the order on that. Okay. Now I'm gonna go to combat. Yep. Swing for 1400. Well. Yeah, a lot more than that. 1600. Well, that's 1400 plus another 8, right? Because each of those cards gives four, another 400. Yeah. So, eight hundred. one of these gets an extra 800 from this. So, 1300, 1500, and then. Jesus. So, 2200. 2200 damage. I am down to 1,200. Okay. Go Turtle Squad. Well, I'm not in a good spot right now. Get another stone. Dignified Seraph again. And he was what, an 800, just, 800? Just an 800, 800 flyer. And then Wingman of Armala again. Another one. And then I will pass turn. I will rest my ruler for another stone. Cling long the sacred beast. So he's an 800, 800 for sacred beast. When this card enters your field, if you control another four sacred beasts, draw a card. Okay. And then I also have the option to pay a generic um, in order to make other four sacred beast resonators gain plus 200, plus 200 until end of turn. Play this ability only once per turn. So I'll go ahead and rest another one of my stones to use this ability to give them an extra 200 200 okay that should be enough to get through any of your defenses so i'm going to swing with the team okay all right i will block one one and then final word him again so Final plus one thousand plus one thousand plus one thousand. Alright, so he's got what thirteen hundred, sixteen hundred. Okay, so I'm gonna get aggressive here. Pay one wind will to play this for my graveyard, because I can do that. Okay. This this card's text allows it to pump this with four hundred. Okay. Then Gonna tap another stone to do the same thing with the one in my hand, given an extra 800. So 800, 1300, 1500, 1700 attack. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So they die. Now. Curious on why you wouldn't just do that to him and kill me. I forgot what your life total was, oh. I guess. So I'm taking 900, which puts me down to 300. Well, it's because I want the game to go on longer, Rob. Okay. I'm going easy on you. No, I'm just kidding. I so not, when you have a lot here. So when you play this card from the graveyard, you, you then exile. have to exile it. Okay. But this one goes to the graveyard. Okay. Done. Yep. I don't think that I'm going to be able to get much out of these. 
is here. Okay. I will get another stone. So, five. To play Celestial Wing Seraph. It's a 1,000, 1,000 angel with flying. When this card enters the field, you may search your main deck for an angel resonator with total cost four or less and put it onto the field, then shuffle my main deck. And whenever this card attacks, gain 300 life for each angel you control. Ooh. There's no angels in here with cost four, so I'll just get another dignified seraph, which is 800, 800. Okay. Then... Little Angel of Armala and Light Spray. So now I have enough blockers for the turn. I can survive another turn. All right, go ahead. Here's my draw. Time to recover. Oh, I'll grab another stone. Mm. Now I'm up to seven. I'll use one to play holy I can't friggin' read these. Holy ground of the four sacred beasts, which says when this card enters your field, choose one. Put target four beasts four sacred beast resonator from your graveyard into your hand or draw a card. I will put Zhu Kuei, the sacred beast, into my hand. Yeah. Then I'll tap that for a generic one to play him. When he comes into play, he deals 200 damage to target resonator for each four sacred beasts I control. So I control five. So obviously you want to take out my biggest. Yeah. Because that's 200 for each, so that's 1,000 you can deal. Mm-hmm. Way right now to give something extra. So, all right, I'm I'm gonna go for that's, swing with yep, the team. That's it. That's game. Overrun you. Yep. So even though none of my dudes fly, I can still just overrun you with friggin' beasts. Yeah, because your deck seems to be aggressive. Yep. All right. So, uh, verdict. I like it. So do I. I'm not. I'm not just saying that because I won. Mm. <laughs> like it's um, fun. The artwork's really cool. I mean, and even though like it does have the same basic setup as Magic, it also feels very different somehow. Mm. Yeah, I guess it's just like the little things that make it feel a little different. I mean, yeah, I think it's interesting. I think I think that's part of what made this a fun game was the fact that it, there were no turns where we would just like draw. And land not, go and not be able to do anything yeah yeah it was we were able to actually do something every single turn yeah all right guys thanks for uh joining us in this uh foray into a new game and uh i guess when we put this video up we'll include a link in the description i guess if they have an official website or something um these i don't know what the actual msrp of the decks are but our local game store was selling them for 16.99 so 17 bucks uh it's battlegrounds games was and that, hobbies of course was that for both of them or for uh, the one per deck okay yeah so they're about 17 dollars 17 or 18 dollars per deck so they were a little more expensive than magic I, you know, it's worth it. It's fun. It'll be yeah. worth playing. Um, also, fun fact, you can probably find it at GameStop. Um, the last time I was at GameStop, they have a little like side on a little display in the middle of the floor that has some card game stuff, some Magic mm -hmm. and Yu-Gi-Oh! and Pokemon booster packs, and I happen to have seen Force of Will starter decks and Force of Will booster packs there, so... Um, if you don't have a local game store that's local, uh, you know, I've heard plenty of people online that are miles and miles and miles away from an actual local game store. If you happen to have a local GameStop, you can probably pick one up there.